Hey, insurance. This is Tony Kindness, Chief Motivational Officer at Insurance Nerds, insurance recruiter extraordinaire, and the Mad Hatter of insurance. Two days ago, word started bubbling up from a few of my favorite online insurance professionals communities that a large layoff had hit farmers insurance. The news confirmed yesterday that 2,400 insurance professionals were affected as farmers laid off 11% of its workforce. First of all, of all, I want to apologize for my delay in addressing this news. I'm on the road and I wanted to get this right. Also, I'm recording on the lobby of a random hotel in Sao Paulo, Brazil. So music or, or noise in the background, I, I apologize. Uh, not under my control. <sighs> okay. Paraphrasing a famous quote, 2,400 affected by layoffs is a statistic. A single person let go is a tragedy. So first of all, I want to be very clear that I understand that for each of those 2,400 insurance professionals and their families, this is a huge deal and a very stressful time. And I want to be very careful to not minimize that. I'm speaking to you today both from a macroeconomic perspective, but also from a micro perspective of my own lived experience. Let me start with my own experience. In October of 2015, I returned home to Berkeley, California from the CPCU Society annual meeting in Indianapolis. I received an email on Sunday that my boss was flying up from LA to have lunch with me and to, quote unquote, discuss plans for the territory next year. When I arrived at the lunch, she was there with another coworker who had himself flown in from Vegas. She had a manila envelope in her hand and appeared to be in the middle of a conference call. She was a hugger, and this was the first time that I've seen her in person that she hadn't hugged me to say hello. Immediately, she informed me that she had a chair on the phone and that effective today, quote unquote, your position has been eliminated because Northern California is no longer a focus, end quote. Please hand over your laptop and the keys to your corporate car. Here's 200 bucks to get you home, cash. The only difference is that I was not part of a mass layoff. I was the only employee affected. I was the only person in Northern California. The job search that followed took me five months, 451 applications. I literally tracked it on an Excel file. And so I was relocating to Atlanta for a job that ended up falling through before the first day after we had already moved. By the way, with the promise of a reload bonus that never materialized. I learned a lot during that job search and many people kindly offered me advice and support. I continue to pay it forward today with a lot of the content that I produce and with chatwithtony.com. In 2018, State Farm announced that they were closing many corporate offices around the country and downsizing 4,300 people who were either unwilling or uninvited to relocate to one of the four hubs. I happened to leave, at the time, I happened to live right across the street from the Atlanta hub. It was literally my view out the window, out of my living room window, as I wrote my book about millennials and insurance. When those layoffs were announced, I published an article called Dear State Farmers, We Can Help, offering chat with Tony conversations to all affected. A few friends warned me not to post it with the reasonable argument that I'd be overwhelmed with 4,000 plus calls. I still posted it, and it led to a few hundred conversations with wonderful insurance professionals. The most surprising part was that about half of the people that, that called were still State Farm. They already worked at one of the four hubs, but they were unhappy with the recent changes at the company. Looking in the rearview mirror with the benefit of five years of perspective, what I have observed is that almost all of those affected at State Farm landed on their feet. I think there's a lot to learn here for those affected at, at farmers uh, from, from the experience that the State Farm people had. They were scared at the time, but if you ask them today, the great majority will tell you they're in a better place today. In fact, if you're watching this today and you were affected in the 2018 State Farm layoffs, I'd love to hear from you. Comment on this post about your experience, what you learned, and how you found your next adventure. And any advice for, for, for the job search for our brothers or farmers. There are no two ways about it. Layoffs are scary and they're traumatic, especially for those who had spent their entire career at a single seemingly stable company and had assumed that they would stay there until retirement. State Farm was packed with people like that. Many described the experience like a divorce or the death of a loved one. I'm sure many of the 2,400 affected at farmers fit this same description and are going through, this, through those very same feelings. In 2015, I learned on my own skin that unemployment is incredibly challenging, even beyond the financial aspects. In fact, the most surprising part of the five months of unemployment in late 2015 and early 2016 was that financially I was fine. In fact, 
After giving up our expensive apartment in Berkeley, California, and spending several weeks in very low cost of living Eastern Europe and relocating to Atlanta while collecting California unemployment, I was actually ahead financially, but emotionally I was devastated. I felt betrayed. I felt that I had left Nationwide, where I had been very happy and appeared to have a very promising future, for a lie. I felt like, like a number when the company had immediately opened a new territory in Colorado and they didn't offer me the option of taking that territory or even interviewing for it. We probably would have said no, but I was down, downright offended that they hadn't asked, especially given that I was delivering great performance in the 14 months that I was there. At some point, I wrote an article called The Morning After with my advice on how to handle a layoff. And later on, I made it into a video with the same advice. I'll include the link in the video description or the comments. Okay. If you were recently downsized by, by farmers, here are the good news. Your insurance experience is very valuable. Insurance unemployment has been jumping between one and 2% for most, most of the last 10 years, and it is not expected to increase anytime soon. When the rest of the economy melted in 2020, it jumped to 3.8% and then quickly came back down. Our industry has more work than re that, that requires insurance experience than we have people with experience you'll find the job. In fact, people who stay at the same company tend to suffer from salary compression and end up underpaid compared to the market. If you were at Farmers for a long time, chances are you'll end up better paid. There are about, a, about 2 million people employed in the US insurance industry. The 2400 will not have a major effect on this very low employment rate. This isn't financial professionals in 2008 or the almost 200,000 tech workers laid off this year. Insurance unemployment will remain very low and it'll remain an employee driven market, especially in the post-COVID remote first era. Having said all that, I do have some tough news. The average insurance job search appears to be between six, six and nine months. That's based on my experience and the experience of people that, that I have advised through the process. The old rule of thumb that it takes one month job search for every $10,000 in your desired salary appears to be a good guess when it comes to insurance. Insurance job searches are a marathon, not a sprint. Your resume will die in the black hole of the applicant tracking system many, many times before you get a new role. You will collect many automated rejection emails without an interview. This is all part of the painful process of job searching in our very slow industry. This is just the way it works. It's not you, it's us. As an industry, we suck at hiring. Okay, so here are a few pieces of advice for your upcoming marathon. Number one, apply for unemployment. It's your right. Even if it's embarrassing, even if you have historically disagreed about the very existence of unemployment insurance, even if you don't think that you'll need it because you have great liquid savings, apply for unemployment. It's your right. You've been paying for that insurance. Number two, cut down discretionary expenses and prepare yourself for a six to nine months out of work. Remember, it's a marathon, not a sprint. Number three, allow yourself to feel it and to properly mourn. For most of those affected, this is the end of an era. Number four, do some introspection. Go over your entire history and figure out what you liked and didn't like about each job you've had. Maybe this is the perfect time to make a pivot to another function of insurance. Number five, educate yourself about other types of, of roles in insurance that you might have never considered. My video, the tier list of insurance jobs easily findable on YouTube is a good place to start. Number six, set a date for sometime next week when you will start your new job of being a full-time job searcher and interviewee. Starting on that date, wake up every morning at a set time, shower and get ready, and job search for a good four to five hours every weekday. Take weekends off. Number seven, make sure that your resume is in tip-top shape. Unless you have 30 years of experience, it should probably be one page. If you absolutely cannot live with bringing it down to one page, I know it's hard, but at least invest in a, in a, in a professional resume writer who knows insurance is important. A professional resume writer who knows insurance. I recommend Lance Polikoff, Mickey Brandt, Brett McKenzie, or Nicolette Barrett. They are all experienced insurance professionals who understand their crazy industry. You can get a great resume for as little as a couple hundred bucks, and it's an investment that will pay for itself. For more information on insurance resumes, read my article, How to Make Sure Your Insurance Resume Gets Noticed, on insurance nerds, insnerds.com. And if you want to dig even deeper in, into resume theory and, and practice, listen to Manager Tools Classic, Your Resume Stinks podcast episode. Number eight, make sure that your LinkedIn is in tip-top shape. You should have at least 500 connections. If you don't, start growing it right now. Each job you've had should have some details under it, 
And don't make the mistake most people make of cutting their job description into bullet points. We can figure out what you are doing, what we really want is your accomplishments. Quantify it if at all possible. You are allowed to guesstimate on the quantification within reason. And get a great LinkedIn photo. It doesn't need to be a professional photo, just clean shaped or with a, your beard neatly trimmed if you're a guy with a button down shirt or you know, something a little bit nice. Something you, you wear, wear to an interview or, or at least to a, you know, if, you're, if you were to went into the office on a non casual day, let's put it that way, uh, standing in front of a white wall taken with an iPhone or Android on uh, portrait mode, smiling, looking at the camera. That's more, than, that's more than enough. Number nine, become an expert at interviewing. I highly recommend the interview series by Manager Tools. That's manager-tools.com. Uh, it's 20 hours of worth of audio. Each hour leaves you homework. It is not insurance specific, and it is the best interview preparation there is. Buy it. It's, it's about 150 bucks. Watch it. Do the homework. Believe me, it'll pay for itself. By the way, I don't get commission on any of the, of the things that I'm recommending that have a cost. Number 10, if you find the job on LinkedIn, apply to it. But LinkedIn is not a job search tool. One of the biggest mistakes I, I see is people think that every job shows up on LinkedIn. It doesn't. You need to, to search beyond LinkedIn. Number 11, sign up for a free Indeed account. Indeed is the best job search website in my opinion, especially because when you create a search, It'll ask you if you want if you want it to email you every day uh, when there's an opening. Say yes. Create multiple searches. Number twelve, learn to deal with third-party recruiters and get your resume into the database of the right recruiters. You can learn more about this on my article, the smart way to deal with recruiters. I will tell you, you definitely want your resume to to be submitted. You want definitely want to submit it to the Jacobson Group. They're the largest recruiter in the insurance space. Number two largest is QuestPro. That's Q-U-E-S-T-P-R-O. So you want to make sure they have it too. Uh, if you are somewhere in the Southeast, maybe up to the Midwest, then definitely submit it to Lance Polikov also. And if, if you are interested in the insurtech world, also submit it to myself and to Jacob Galeck, G-A-L-E-C-K-I. Okay. Number 13, take a good look at insurtech. If you have not been paying attention at the insurtech world, that's fine. The easiest way to start learning about InsurTech and the opportunities there is to sign up for the Coverager newsletter. That's the word coverage with an R at the end, dot com. Sign up for the free newsletter. That is the living pulse of the InsurTech world. Number 14, the future of insurance is remote, but it's a lot easier to, to get a remote role for a function you've already done. So basically, if you've been in claims for, for years, it'll be a lot easier to get a, to get a remote claims job than it is to, to get a remote underwriting role your first role in a new function will very, 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 very likely be in person, at least for now. Highly, highly, highly recommend apply for the job, even if you're not willing to relocate and even if it's, if, if it's not in your local area and even if it does not say it's remote, in my estimation, a good 20 to 25% of insurance roles that are posted as in the office end up getting filled remotely because they simply cannot find somebody with the right experience to uh, come into the office or relocate to the area. So apply. Number 15, the remote world has winners and losers. And sadly, one of the demographics that, that is losing in the remote world are people who live in expensive cost of living areas. And sadly, a significant amount of farmers people live in Southern California, given the, that farmers headquarters is in Southern California, with Southern California being an extremely expensive cost of living area. If you are one of those people that lives in, in Southern California and you have been downsized by, by farmers and you're looking for a remote role, this will be a hard search. Consider whether it makes sense to relocate to an area that number one has more insurance roles and number two that has better cost of living. Because the problem is I get a call all the time on Chad with Tony that basically asks, I live in LA how do I get a Midwestern or, or a East Coast or a Southern insurance company to pay me enough for remotely to live in LA? The answer is you don't. The, the answer is the only reason that you were, you were pay, being paid as much as, as you were is because your company required you to be in the office in very expensive Southern California. So unfortunately, that's going to be a really tricky search for those of you that are Southern California based and 
cannot relocate. No, no, number 16, what about a career coach? Well, my general advice on career coaches is do your own job search first. If it's five or six months from now and you're calling Chad with Tony really beat up, maybe it's time and you've applied to hundreds of jobs and just have not been any progress and you are really, really, really beat up, maybe that's the time to get a career coach. If you do get to that point, I recommend going to my website, insnerch.com, click on resources, click on insurance career coaches. That is my list of recommended coaches. They all came from insurance. Tell them that I sent you. I do not get commission from any of them. Most of them do a first version free. Finally, please know that the wonderful insurance community and myself, we are here to help. Reach out. Personally, you can grab some of my calendar at chadwitonio.com. I will be on the road for most of the, of the next several weeks. So unfortunately, the timing is really bad for, for me. But add me on LinkedIn. Send me a LinkedIn message. I, I am happy to help however I can. More than anything, please know that you will be fine. We work in a wonderful industry that has so many opportunities that require people with experience. You have that experience. That experience is, is valuable. Thank you very much for your time. Best of luck.